Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and the open source vector graphics application Inkscape just got one step closer to the 1.4 release with the release this week of the 1.4 beta. So what we're going to do is jump in, take a look at a couple of the new features here, jump into the release notes and go from there. So what you see in front of you, this is Inkscape. This is one of the runner ups for the Inkscape splash screen. I'll show you where you can grab this if you wish. If you never used Inkscape before, it is basically a vector graphics application in the mold of Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer. You draw things basically with shape, with mathematics. And as you are drawing them, um, they can scale up and down infinitely because they are vector as opposed to raster or bitmap graphics. So what exactly is new in this particular release? Well, we've got three things I'm going to feature today. And then there's a few more or quite a few more actually in the uh, release notes that we will scan after the fact. The first thing I'm going to show you is the new grid UI. Come here to your document properties like so, and you will find grids. Inside of grids, you have first of a new UI here. And one thing you can add in now is a modular grid, which basically, as you can see here, and let me just zoom out a little bit, it's a set of rectangles, spaced rectangles. Uh, so if you're doing an array or a tile or a calendar, that kind of thing, modular could be useful for you. Let me go ahead and remove that. And the other one is ax axonometric. Uh, so basically uh, angled grids. So you can see here the the layout of it. So you got the major grid and the minor grid going on right there. Let me just uh, change the color here a bit so you can see, jack up the intensity a little bit. It'll show up a little bit better. And then same for the minor grid. Let's go on over here. Okay, I think I just broke the UI. Oh, it put me in behind. All right, and let's just switch that guy out right there. So you can see the effects of the two grids going on right there. What you can do now is you can actually set an angle. So for example, I can set this to like 26 degrees and you're going to get a much more isometric style. So if you're working on, um, you know, a traditional isometric layout for your game or various different layouts, you can now set them up using this new grid. So we've got those two new grid setups. So we've got both the axon, axonom, axonometric and uh, modular setup there. Uh, and of course the new UI for dealing with it. Another thing that we have now is the new filter gallery. So if you're applying a filter to something in your world, such as, uh, this ship right here, you can now come in here to filters, filter gallery, uh, and you will find a list or a rundown of all the various different effects. By the way, you can blur it down by category right here. So drill down, just have the categories you're interested in, or you can have all effects like so. So if I want to do a matting effect, I apply matte. There's a description of it down here and then apply button like so, and it will apply a matte to that. The other thing you can do is select one and then double click and then it will apply the filter that way. If the filter has parameters that pop up, those parameters will be shown. So you got this new filter gallery for going through and organizing your filters. Selecting your filters should be a faster uh, process. And of course you have the preview image indicating what exactly that filter does. Now the final area I'm gonna showcase today is in the text tools. So let me just close down the filter gallery and you will find you have this new text setup. Now there's definitely some spacing issues they need to work with here. So you've got various different sized uh, text layouts, but you're getting uh, here, you can get a preview of the all of the inline. So if it's got um, an, an italist or a bold or a semi bold or whatever, it will show them all in a row like so. So obviously the spacing isn't working ideally uh, to what I would like. And then you can also come over here and I can say, okay, show AA and I can do a grid of the fonts and have them display this way and have them all preview in a low in a row like this you do have the ability to filter down you can also have it show the font name with the description i don't think it will do anything on this grid view but if i switch back here we can have it show the font name and not show the font name obviously this is an experimental feature and they need to work on the spacing here also you can change the preview size so that's where you're going to get the underlying preview of what that font looks like. It began, they need to work on the spacing, at least for certain fonts here. Uh, but this is an experiment's new option for dealing with fonts. It gives you a bunch of new options. Uh, you also have uh, sorting and filtering options here. So you can sort by uh, light to heavy fonts. Uh, we could have it show just serif fonts as an example. Uh, so definitely a handy new tool. Again, some layout stuff they need to work out here. But this is a new option available to you. This is set here. So edit preferences and head on over to tools, text tool, and you can turn it on and off using this one. Now I have found um, just switching it isn't good enough. You actually have to stop and restart to get it to go to the new or the old version. But that uh, is the end of the demonstration portion. Let's head on over to the website of things. 
So here we are. Uh, it's available at Inkscape.org if you want to go ahead and grab it. Again, this is completely free and open source software available for Windows, Mac, and Linux if you want to go ahead and check it out. Full set of features is available here. So there's a ton. I'm not going to go through all of what's available, but if you need to work with vector graphics formats, especially the FB SVG file format, this could be a good pickup for you. Again, it is completely free FOSS software. Uh, and then we're talking specifically about the Inkscape 1.4 beta today. Uh, so it's available, downloads for Linux as an app image, uh, Microsoft uh, Windows as an EXE. By the way, your browser is going to complain about that because it hasn't been downloaded that many times. Uh, it has been scanned on my computer and I found it to be safe, but obviously do your own due diligence. And it's also available for Mac OS. So what is new in the 1.4 beta? Uh, well, we already showed you the filter gallery. So it's the best way to find filters, new dialogue features, previews, categories, and search. Uh, and we also have modular grids and improved axonometric, and I hate that word, grids. Uh, set the grid angle by ratio for isometric designs and use modular grids to plan layouts and make icons. So we saw both the new... Um, isometric style grids and the modular grids in action earlier on. Uh, then we have swatch dialogues and palette file handling were both improved. So quick access to dialogue layout controls. You can search for colors and open different palette file formats. There is the new unified font browser preview. Again, this is experimental right now. Definitely still needs some time in the oven, especially for previewing certain fonts. You saw they were a little chunky, but it is an improvement in terms of workflow over what exists today. So I, I do like that feature there. And then we have customizable handles. So power users with CSS knowledge. To me, CSS is the devil's language, so I don't touch it. But CSS knowledge can now customize the styling and basic shapes of all of the handles in Inkscape. And then there's more. New templates for folding booklets. Uh, additional options in the ruler and taper stroke LPE, uh, the preview in the spray tool, um, which is going to actually, before you start painting, you get an idea of what you're going to spray. During spraying, it doesn't actually show you. Uh, and then many new command line options, updated translations, and hundreds of bug fixes. So if you want to get into the nitty gritty details, uh, here are the full release notes of what is here. Um, and yeah, let's zoom that in so you can actually read it like a human. Again, we did all the highlight stuff here, but there is obviously a bunch more to this particular release. A lot of it is improvements. Here you can see, again, the new spray tool. Uh, when you are pre-spray, so when you're not actually painting, it gives you an outline or a preview of what you're going to paint. And then while you're painting, that preview goes away. Uh, then we got, again, a number of other improvements across uh, the board. Some more details about all the new features that we talked about here. So you can see, even in their example, it's clipping off. Uh, it's, it's not as pronounced or bad as it was in my case, but some fonts just aren't rendering right. So there's still some work to do there with the new uh, font user interface, so the unified font browser. But I do think that this is a step forward. The new functionality is definitely nice there. Um, and yeah, other improvements here as well. I will have uh, links to all of this in the article down below. So if you want to go ahead, uh, it is available for download. Uh, right here. So I will have a, a download link there. So you want to go ahead and check it out right there. By the way, the actual um, thumbnail for this video uh, came from the 1.4 contest. Uh, so the winner has been announced. So this is the winner right here. Uh, I went with the runner up. I actually like this one the best, but they're, they do a contest uh, every time there is a new release for people to create, um, you know, the new splash screen using Inkscape to show what Inkscape is all about. And that's where that came from. So if you're interested, these can all be downloaded from here. Uh, so yeah, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Inkscape, Inkscape 1.4 beta is here. Let me know what you think of Inkscape, what you, what you think of 1.4 in general, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.